Hello, my name is Sonia and I will be talking about bulimia nervosa. Um, there is a common misconception surrounding eating disorders which include bulimia nervosa, anorexia nervosa, and binge eating among several others um, that people often think it is a choice rather than a disorder. In general, eating disorders affect roughly 28.8 million Americans in their lifetime according to the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders. Um, according to American Addiction Centers, bulimia specifically has affected 6.2 million Americans in their lifetime. Um, bulimia nervosa has similar criteria as binge eating. However, the one thing that makes it different is the compensation afterward. Um, in this video, I will explain into further detail the criteria for bulimia nervosa. Um, bulimia nervosa follows a strict criteria as defined by the DSM-5. Um, criteria A is recurrent episodes of binge eating as characterized by both A1 eating with any, within any two hour period, an amount of food that is definitively larger than what most individuals would eat in a similar period of time under similar circumstances. Um, an example of this could include indulging in cookies, half a bag of chips, and two slices of pizza after a meal, or swinging by a fast food restaurant and getting some food before going home to eat dinner. Both scenarios could be within a two hour time period. Um, criteria A2 is a feeling that one cannot stop eating or control what or how much one is eating. Both um, scenarios given earlier give a clear understanding that they cannot stop eating or control their food intake. Um, criteria B is the recurrent inappropriate compensatory behaviors in order to prevent weight gains such as self-induced vomiting, misuse of laxatives, um, diuretics or other medications, um, as well as fasting or excessive exercise. This one's pretty self-explanatory, um, engaging in any kind of behavior that basically reverses the binge eating episode in an unhealthy manner. Um, this, this one actually kind of surprised me because I was always under the impression bulimia was associated with vomiting after a meal. Um, I was unaware that there were other behaviors that were associated with bulimia, like fasting or laxatives, as stated earlier. Um, I actually learned in the DSM-5-2 that vomiting is the most common inappropriate compensatory behavior and individuals with bulimia disorder will actually purposefully, purposefully binge in order to vomit. Um, criteria C states the binge eating and inappropriate compensatory behaviors occur on average at least once a week for three months. Again, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Criteria D states self-evaluation is unjustifiably influenced by body shape and weight. This criteria is actually pretty important because individuals take note of their body weight and body shape, which in turn determines their self-esteem. Um, criteria E is the disturbance does not occur exclusively during episodes of anorexia nervosa. In other words, bulimia is closely related to anorexia as well as binge eating. Um, due to the fear of gaining weight, bulimia cannot be considered if it is concurrent with episodes of anorexia. Um, all of the criteria is important to consider bulimia. However, the overall most important takeaway from the criteria is criteria B, which again states that there is compensatory behaviors followed by the binge eating episode. That's what separates bulimia from binge eating, which is a behavior. Um, basically, what separates bulimia from binge eating is the behavior afterwards that justifies their binging. Um, without this information, it is unlikely an individual may be considered for bulimia nervosa eating disorder. Um, when indulging in binge eating, for bulimia, it is not considered binging if you are craving a specific nutrient. However, binges may include food consumption that would otherwise be avoided by that person, according to the DSM-5. Um, what are the dangers of bulimia? Bulimia is considered, or bulimia is a serious condition that can have some very adverse effects on the human body. Um, to start a mental danger because this requires someone to change their thought process to thinking that every single time they eat 
they have to purge or compensate in some way. Um, another adverse and even more serious effect is the physical dangers. Every time someone purges after binging, um, stomach acid moves into your esophagus. This delicate lining in your throat is not as strong as your stomach lining, so it will not handle the intense acid as well as the stomach lining would. Um, the most important and one of the most effective treatments for bulimia or any eating disorder is a mixture of diet change as well as cognitive behavioral ther therapy, according to Harvard Medical School. Um, diet change can mentally ease someone's mind into understanding the food they are eating is healthy and can have a slower effect of adding fat tissue to their body if body dysmorphia, which is weight gain, um, is their main cause. Cognitive behavioral therapy can also aid in this because the individual suffering from bulimia can speak with a professional helping them through their trial. Um, having someone to aid in this transition to normal eating and dieting can create a healthier and more positive atmosphere conducive to eliminating the issue at the root of the problem. Um, bulimia can be easily treatable, can be an easily treatable illness. However, if untreated, it can massively, it can have a massively dangerous effects on the individual and their family. Um, and that is pretty much the criteria for um, bulimia. And there's just some um, ways to treat it. So yeah.